Hi folks, uh, Rob Goller here. Thanks for joining me again on our weekly discussions of local history. Um, thanks uh, for uh, clicking on the link here and uh, taking a listen. I really enjoy doing these um, and I've gotten some really good feedback, um, just random places at uh, the grocery store, <laughs> uh, places like that um, out when I'm out walking. Uh, people stopping me and saying they've enjoyed the topic, especially last week's about the Erie County Fair. I do want to talk before we get started on this week's topic a little bit about um, make a correction to last week. I had said um, uh, the, uh, there was some confusion about um, where the fair was uh, before it landed in Hamburg permanently. And uh, we actually have um, hosted the fair here in East Aurora. And if you uh, want to learn more about that and you didn't listen last week, just click on the video last week uh, about the history of the Erie County Fair. We hosted it here in 1850 and 1854. Uh, there, are, there was some confusion about where it was in 1855, and I had misstated um, a fact about uh, the fair uh, when it was held in Orchard Park. It was known as East Hamburg at the time. And I had misstated, uh, I think I said the governor had spoken there when in fact it was just, uh, it was a famous journalist who spoke um, at that fair and it was in East Hamburg in 1855. Uh, however, there was some confusion and I even got myself confused. And after I got done with the video, I was thinking, oh, did I say the right thing? Because I said that the fair in 1855 was held in East Hamburg and I had uh, saw it uh, um, someplace else. Uh, but then in other sources, I saw that it um, had indicated that the fair was held in Aurora in 1855, 1850, 1854, and 1855. In fact, the fair um, Wikipedia page that they have um, that's devoted to the fair has that the 1855 fair was held in um, the town of Aurora, as well as uh, a book about the fair had indicated that the fair was held in East Aurora in 1855. And it wasn't. It was that honor goes to... Um, goes to Orchard Park. So we did only host it twice. So again, I've written books and I know the feeling when you go to print and after the fact you find a mistake and you can't change it because it's in print. Um, so I think that might have been the case with some places and then they just repeated the mistake just gets repeated a couple times. Um, but uh, we, I talked to a couple people and we uh, someone had said that they um, had actually questioned me about it because they had read somewhere that it was also in 1855. And uh, I'm a stickler for facts, so I double checked, um, and there was an error in some um, written history about the Erie County Fair. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. If, sorry if there was any confusion, but 1850, uh, 1854, the fair was uh, held here in East Aurora. And if you want to know more, just listen to last week's discussion. Um, also, uh, there I keep an eye out on the on the channel here because I'm going to uh, on the Facebook page I'm going to share. The YouTube channel that I am almost done with. Um, I've noticed a couple videos on Facebook have been eliminated. Uh, not sure why. There's been some glitches. Um, it's great for live um, live uh, discussions, um, but to um, and some people have said that they're not on Facebook or Facebook's difficult to listen to. So I'm downloading all these um, videos onto YouTube, and hopefully that's easier for folks to listen to. You can listen to it on the app. Um, the YouTube app. So uh, listen for that, look out for that, um, and I'll post a link once I'm I've double triple checked everything on that on that page, and I will update um, the video. So um, that was another idea someone gave me because I thought, oh, I'll just do it on the Facebook page, that'll be fine. But some folks had said it'd be easier to do it on on YouTube and to listen. You don't always have to look at me. Uh, so uh, this week's topic actually came from a discussion um, someone was having uh, with me about um as we especially as we're entering um the thick of summer uh and we listen to the trees and the, the wind through the through the leaves of the trees and uh i had posted a, uh, on the aurora town historian facebook page um a great article from 100 years ago when east aurora in may of 1923 uh held a reforestation day and uh they planted um, according to the news reports, 25,000 trees here in the uh, greater East Aurora area. And the effort, no surprise, was led by uh, Albert Hubbard II of the Roycroft, 
um, and he was in charge of the Roycroft at the time because Albert Hubbard, his dad, had died on the Lusitania. And the Reforestation Day um, planting trees was done um, in honor of his dad. Uh, but the Fish and Game Club here in East Aurora was also uh, really involved in this 1923 Reforestation Day. This was a big deal, uh, and I was surprised at how big of a deal it was in 1923. I had, in my head, um, always just assumed that environmentalism, um, I've fallen into the trap, now we know better, but I fell into the trap of thinking that environmentalism, um, saving trees, replanting trees, reforestation efforts were, were Earth Day. They were modern day things as we talk about climate change and all those things. But in fact, um, these environmental efforts go back more than a hundred years. And um, as I when I came across this article about Reforestation Day in May of 1923 in East, in East Aurora, and it was a big deal. They actually had a big parade um, in the in the community. The Fish and Game Club members and the and the uh, Roycrofters uh, led this parade down Main Street. They planted. They volunteered all day. The mayor declared it a holiday in the community, um, a civic holiday. Uh, businesses actually closed for the day. Um, so that uh, um, customers and uh, employees could actually go out um, into the community and help with this plant, these, the planting of all these trees. Um, and it just was a community effort that, um, the, um, that the entire community seemed to rally around um, and to close everything down so that everyone could focus on this effort. So it was a really, really big deal. Um, it wasn't just a, a little ceremony in front of the Roycroft where they planted a tree. They did do that, but there was a huge effort to plant trees, 25,000 according to the one count uh, across the community, and it happened again and again, and they kept planting more and more trees. Um, it wasn't just a one-off, one one-day event. So planting trees is not a new concept. Saving trees, preserving trees is not a new concept. It goes back more than 100 years. Um, in fact, you know, 1923, uh, that's the date I found, but I, as I researched it more, um, what was happening is the country was growing and through a variety of things, uh, uh, building houses, uh, fires, there were forest fires back then as well, um, uh, natural disasters, uh, and base, a lot of it was cutting down of the trees, disease had taken its toll. So by the late 1800s, um, we had lost a lot of trees in the United States. And actually in the late 1800s, the U.S. Forest Service was started. The government started an effort to um, implement reforestation efforts toward the turn of the century. So this wasn't an East Aurora thing. Um, it was a nationwide uh, effort to reforest, to bring trees back, because we had lost a huge percentage of our trees. And so East Aurora was not in a vacuum on this. Um, of course, we had um, local organizations that um, made it a priority, uh, but communities across the country were encouraged, were funded in order to plant trees um, that had been, had been lost. Um, so uh, there were a lot of uh, acts of uh, Congress and bills um, and programs, the U.S. Forest Service being one of them, um, to bring trees back to reforest. Here in East Aurora, um, it's hard to imagine uh, that we had, uh, we talk about trees today and how we're losing, um, how important trees are, and perhaps you hear some people say um, that we don't have enough trees, that we never will have enough trees, um, and the benefits of trees. Uh, but if you look back, and I'm going to post these, if you're watching on um, Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, head over to Facebook, I'll put a link, um, and I'm going to put some photographs of, uh, and I can't do it now live for some reason, it won't let me post photographs, but I'll do it as soon as we're done live here, and if you're watching later, um, you can look at them. But it it, it suddenly clicked to, uh, to me as I was reading about the reforestation effort, efforts of the 1920s into the 1930s, um, uh, how bad it was 100 years ago, even in the 1920s into the 1930s, of how many trees we did not have. And it dawned on me that there are photos, as we were going through photos of Hamlin Park, uh, and there was a field day at Hamlin Park, and the children are playing and doing um, competitions in Hamlin Park. 
we focused on the kids. We focused on the girls racing and the boys racing and the three-legged races and the um, and the various uh, uh, spelling bees that they did during the during the um, um, field days that were held in Hamlin Park a hundred years ago. In the background, you can see all the way um, to the hills that are in South Wales um, beyond the village, all the way. And I thought, wow, we can't do that today. If you stand in the middle of Hamlin Park, you can't see beyond Hamlin Park. You can't see um, if anywhere that you're in the village beyond just a couple blocks, maybe. I'm looking out of my office here. I have a great view to the east. I can't see the horizon. Why? There are a ton of trees. But 100 years ago, these pictures of Hamlin Park, um, you can see all the way to in the hills in the background. And today you don't. Why? Well, because the trees that were planted 100 years ago and then the program that just continued um, have blocked our view. So we now have more trees because of this effort 100 years ago. And it now I look at those pictures from 100 years ago in a whole different perspective, a whole different viewpoint. Um, and I look for, you know, the trees and the view. Um, there are pictures that we have standing up um, on the hill outside the village, looking down toward the village, and you can see practically the whole village. Um, you can't do that today. There are trees. You can't stand up on um, Castle Hill and look down. Um, and another good example, and I'll post the pictures as well, is to the west outside of the village as you're going out Route 20A, Rushing Waters, that big castle looking house. Um, there are great old pictures that we have where they took a picture from the hill across what is today Route 20A, looking across the creek, and you can see clear across. Um, and yes, yeah, some of those old pictures were taken during uh, winter time, but some even in good weather. And you can actually see there are no trees along um, the banks of Casanova Creek. Uh, what happened? Well, they late 1800s, early 1900s, here in East Aurora, um, yes, there were a couple diseases that went through and took trees, but mostly we were building a lot of houses. There were a lot of people moving here. There was a lot of construction and most of the lumber came local. So uh, came from local sources. There's actually a huge lumber yard uh, where Pine Street is today. Uh, going all the way down, we have photographs of, the, of uh, the lumber yard there and they took a lot of trees down in that section of town. And there were lumber yards all over selling lumber and they would clear um, forests, take down trees uh, for the lumber they would use to build houses. So this was happening in the 1800s and people, frankly, didn't think about the repercussions of it. Today we have programs where you take a tree down, you put at least one up, uh, you plant at least one to replace it or two uh, to replace the one that you took down. Back then they didn't think about it, they just cleared. Um, there are photographs of the late 1800s where the grove, which is today Hamlin Park, it was known as Holmes Grove then, is obvious in the middle of the village. You look for a picture that of, of the village looking across, across what is today the village of East Aurora, and there's just this plot of trees in the middle. That's the grove, because everything else around it was taken down. For streets and houses, they would clear. Um, a lot of times they do that today. Some developers will do that and you'll hear, especially in our village, but a lot of places where um, the planning boards will insist that trees be saved when possible. They didn't think of that back then. They just took them down. So we got to a point, East Aurora and the United States, uh, where we were just taking trees down faster than we were, uh, could replace them. And so this effort in the 19, uh, late 1800s into the 1900s led to our for reforestation day here in East Aurora. Um, and thank goodness they did that. Um, so today, the trees, many of the trees that we have, um, if, uh, we have several trees that are over 100 years old that probably were part of this effort. Um, but the effort just kept continuing. And so we are reaping the benefit from um, uh, uh, the uh, what was happening a hundred years ago. Um, yes, I'm going to. Yes, Mark, thank you for putting that on there. I'm going to uh, definitely. There's a comment in here about uh, um, 
the the looking beyond what's the primary focus of a photograph. So I'm going to post those photos, um, and hopefully you can take a look at the background of those photos and see um, all the trees that are missing. So um, again, uh, uh, the reason I'm talking about this today, I think, is just because um, we sometimes fall into the trap thinking that um, uh, the concept environmentalism is a new thing, and we talk we hear about um, climate change and how we have to plant more trees and that sort of thing. But it was an effort a hundred years ago. Didn't hurt that we had presidents like uh, you know Teddy Roosevelt, who was an environmentalist, uh, and uh, and the government stepping in. And even uh, lately, um, uh, th there have been programs recently about reforestation. Um, and so we're just we're just following in the footsteps of what they were trying to do a hundred years ago. Um, but the trees, if you look around um, at the village of East Aurora, those the trees that we're enjoying today um, were not because of the 18 of, of efforts of the early 1800s, mid 1800s. Um, they took all the trees down. It was the turn of the century folks that made a, um, a concerted effort to get trees planted. And I think that's uh, important to remember. Um, that it didn't happen by accident. There was a concerted effort to make sure our village and surrounding area had trees and they understood the benefit of it. Um, so we have them to thank for what we are enjoying today. And that's one of the things about trees. I'm not a tree expert, um, but you'll hear all the time is we're planting for future generations. You're not going to get to enjoy the trees as much um, as the next generation will. So um, that's what's great about trees is you're kind of leaving the legacy um, uh, for the next generation. So think of that as we plant the trees. What we're enjoying today was left to us by previous generations, these big old great trees um, that were um, uh, purposely planted in many respects um, by the people who came before us. Again, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments or send me a private message. A lot of you do that. That's fine because you don't want to get um, involved in the comment section. I get that. Um, and again, I'm going to post uh, the new YouTube channel um, that hopefully will make it easier for many of you to uh, listen in and, and send your comments. Um, thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week.